Good morning and welcome to our final day of Open Week. My name is Sumilan Dinge and I'm from Marketing. Joining me today is Brunilda Gharva, who is our Head of Department for the School of Financial Planning and Insurance. So, um, to get things started, first of all, I'd just like to welcome everyone who has taken the time to join us this morning. And just a bit of housekeeping on my side. If you notice on the right hand side of your screen, you will see an interactive chat box. Kindly pop in your name, tell us you're watching from, uh, how the weather is, we'd love to hear from you. And then we have an ask a question box, which is at the bottom of the screen. So all your questions that you have throughout the sessions, you can pop them in there and then we'll get to them during our Q&A session. If you have um, any questions also you can you are welcome to use the interactive chat box as well so we'll be looking at both the chat box as well as um, the ask a question box so without taking anyone's time i'm going to hand over to brunilda who will talk to us about the school and all the fun things that we offer over to you brunilda i will share your screen shortly um, from our side as well, welcome to the session. Um, we're excited to have all of you here and we hope that the session will be insightful. At the end of the presentation, we'll also have a moment just to ask some questions as well or to tend to questions. So yeah, please pop your questions in the chat or in the uh, question, ask your question box and we will um, get in contact with you or answer your question as soon as we can. We're just waiting for the slides to come on. Sorry, we are experiencing a little bit of technical difficulties this morning due to load shedding everywhere. Um, as you can see, I don't have the best lighting. I'm also currently on load shedding. So yes, just please bear with us while we work on this. So sorry about this. The technical issues are uh, getting to us uh, and I'm struggling to share this, the presentation on my side, um, Brunilda. Would you be so kind to share it on your side? There's load shedding and it's just doing all the things. Okay, let me just quickly open them. Okay, I'm hoping that this is going to work now. <laughs> um, okay, so like we said, we today we will just be talking about, about the postgraduate diploma in financial planning. Earlier this week, we had a, a session for the advanced certificate as well as the higher certificate in financial planning. And yesterday, we also had a session about the advanced and higher certificate in short-term insurance. So um, moving on. Um, who are we? So um, Millbrook Education forms part of the Stadio Holdings Group. We um, are sister companies of the Stadio and AFTA groups. In, uh, within Millbrook Education, we have a few schools. We have the Business School, we have the Commerce School, we have then our school, the Financial Planning and Insurance School, the Investment and Banking School, as well as College. In terms of that, um, 
we were established, Moorbuck Education established in 1997. Our qualifications range from a very wide variety of certificates to a doctorate level, and our offices are currently in the observatory in Cape Town. We want to provide trusted leading learning journeys with high levels of holistic support that are, are accessible and transformative. And we are very excited to partner with you on your financial pl planning learning journey. Okay, in terms of the programs that we offer, we currently have the certificate in financial planning uh, in financial products on the NQF level four. Then on NQF level five, we have the higher certificate in financial planning, the higher certificate in financial products, the higher certificate in short term insurance. On the advanced certificate level NQF six, we have the advanced certificate in financial planning, the advanced certificate in short term insurance. The, on NQF level seven, we have in um, conjunction with the School of Commerce, the BCom with a major in financial planning or a BCom with a major in short term insurance. And then the reason why we're all here today on NQF level eight, we have the postgrad diploma um, in financial planning. So the question might come up as to why we um, why you should study the PG dip in financial planning. So Millpark Education's postgrad diploma um, addresses the educational requirements for the designation of certified financial planner, which is awarded by the Financial Planning Institute of Southern Africa, also known as the FPI. This designation, which is internationally recognized, is the highest designation for financial planners in South Africa. Once you've completed the qualification, you will be eligible to apply to the FBI to write the professional competency, competency exam, also known as the um, PCE, for the certif C CFP certification. It, um, it also appears on the Financial Sector Conduct Authority or the FSEA's list of recognized qualifications for phase, fit and proper purposes. So why would you want to study it with Mopoc, seeing that there's other institutions also offering this? Mopoc's alumni has constantly formed part of the top achievers in the FBI professional competency examinations for CFP professionals. During February 2020, the first and second places were held by Milpok alumni in, and therefore four out of the top five candidates were Milpok um, alumni. In August 2020, the first, second, third and fifth place out of the top five candidates were Milpok alumni. In March 2021, the second place out of the top five candidates in September 21, we held the second and fourth place out of the top five candidates with a pass rate of 68% for Milpoke alumni compared to the overall pass rate of 46%. And during this year, in our March exam, we held the first, third and fifth place out of the top five candidates. We therefore confident that our qualification and how we structure it Will, will qualify you and enable you to write the competency exam successfully. So the question, who will be helping you during your learning journey? Um, it will be myself as the program oversight manager. Then as the program manager, we have Wadia Dramat. As the lecturers on the modules, uh, it's also again myself, Tamsin Gradwell, Jürgen Moller, Pietro Wurndal, and Gary van der Merwe. The current modules on the PG Diff in financial planning, um, there are currently seven modules, uh, which are all compulsory modules. Um, you will see that the induction to financial planning, which is the very first module anyone that starts with this qualification will do, is while it is compulsory, you will see that it does not have a credit bearing um, a leg, so um, people do tend to underestimate <laughs> the induction module, but please note it still is compulsory. The lecturer there is Petru Wurndal, and the aim of this module is to focus on the financial uh, calculations to give you an introduction to the products and as well to taxation. 
On the financial planning environment module, which is um, on which Tamsin Gradwell is a lecturer, you will see um, that the focus there is to give you a broad yet detailed introduction to financial planning. With specific, we specifically cover in that module income tax in very de a very detailed cover of income tax, and we have an extension extensive range of. Um, of covering on the legislation that impacts on the regulatory environment. The next module there will be the risk and estate planning, which is um, offered by myself. And this module will provi provide an in-depth knowledge of the structure, nature, tax consequences, features and benefits of various project products that is available to address risk needs and students will be able to conduct a capital needs analysis to provide comprehensive advice to a client to address their risk needs and will be equipped with the necessary technical and estate planning knowledge to advise the clients. The next module then will be investment planning, which of which the lecturer is Jürgen Moller. So investment planning module incorporates an in-depth knowledge of the structure, nature, tax consequences, features and benefits of various products that are designed to address a client's investment needs. With an analysis of the client's current investment portfolio and future investment needs in order to enable students to advise the clients. Then the next module, I think I actually missed the module there, apologies, um, the retirement planning module, um, which is also hosted by Tams and Gradwell. So this module um, is aimed at providing students with the required knowledge to conduct a capital needs analysis for a client, client before and at retirement stage and to provide a comprehensive advice to address the capital shortfalls or alternatively, to be able to consider the structure and tax implications of different retirement funds on a client's situation at retirement. Our corporate financial planning model, um, of which Gary van der Merwe is the lecturer, um, focuses on employee benefits and business assurance. Students will be expected to draft a comprehensive financial plan for a corporate client. Then the last one there, sorry, I now clicked, <laughs> I should have clicked there, but the last one there would be the case study module. Um, we, in the case study module, um, which is held um, or lectured by Peter Wendell, um, it, we use um, all the other modules. So we use the knowledge, the integrated knowledge of all other modules um, in order to enable students to prepare a comprehensive financial plan for their clients. Students are also expected to apply the knowledge of current affairs, such as the current economic um, climate, to advise clients of the impact thereof on their financial planning. So just um, in short there, what does the course look like um, when you start it? So each module um, has got the eight week span. Um, at the current moment, um, except for the case study that has a 12 week span. So um, what does it look like? So in week one, you will have an assignment to do. In week two, there's an online test. In week three, there is another assignment. In week four, there's an online test. And in week five, there's another assignment. And week six, an online test again. During week seven and eight, you will be able to prepare for the exam. You will review your work and go through the mock exam again, and then um, write your exam at the end of week eight. So in eight weeks time, you'll be finished with all the, the module or all the um, topics covered in the coursework, and you can continue to the next module. So what does our course pages look like? Um, I provided there a snip just for you to see what it looks like. So you have, first off, you have an overview page, you have a live at Millpark page, then you will see you will have week one, two, three with a proctor help tab. Then again, week four, five, and six. You also have then an exam prep tab, a mock exam tab, and a summative assessment exam tab. 
So on the overview page, there you will have your welcome um, to an introduction to the, to the module. You will also have announcements um, so if you are ever looking for anything that was communicated, you can find it on the an announcement page um, or on this tab. Um, the announcements are also sent um, out to students to their Milkbog email addresses. So still on the overview page, we also give you provide you with a short schedule of what the weeks look like or when the weeks will be from um, which time to which time. And then we also provide you with the exam date, the release date of um, results, as well as supplementary exam information. Okay, you will also find on there assessment guidelines that will give you the opportunity um, to have a look at how the course is structured, what is the percentage um, of each test and assignment that contribute towards your formative mark um, and how much will, of the formative mark will contribute to the overall mark. You will also find on there a study plan indicating exactly what is covered and what is expected in every week. Okay, so what does the tutor forum look like? Um, uh, okay, so the tutor forum as we know it um, is now called the Connection Hub. This is also on the overview tab. There you will see you have um, you will have a short recording to meet your online lecture or a so short um, introduction to your online lecturer where you can just um, connect with your online lecturer during the first week. And then um, you will see you have the Ask Your Online Lecturer um, tab there and you will see I've pointed down the arrow there to indicate if you click on the Ask Your Online Lecturer, it will divert you to the tutor forum where you can then go add um, a new question and it will be provided um, in the structure as indicated. So there will also, and there will also then be a, 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 an opportunity for you to make contact with other students stu uh, studying with you under the connection, tab, uh, connection Hub. Okay, under the Live at Millpark tab, um, you will pro be provided with information on how to join a live session. Um, and we will also on there provide you with the details as to when the live sessions will be, what time it will be, who will be presenting, and we will also then provide you with the link to access the live session. And afterwards, you will be able to, um, you will receive the recording link on this Live at Mill Park tab so that you can access the recording of the live session should you want to. Okay, so what does the weekly tabs look like? Um, you'll see I've just tabbed, uh, clicked on, on a week two there. So all the weeks look similar from one to six. So in the beginning, you will see that you will have your outcomes um, of what for the module itself. And then you will have your weekly objectives. So what do you need to know by the end of that week? And then you will um, see that you have your learning resources, resources such as um, your access to the financial, oh, oh sorry, to the um, <laughs> study material, uh, the study guide via vital sources, and other required reading will also be uploaded on this tab. Then moving on to, oh, so sorry, yes, still on the weekly tabs, you will see, you will find your, um, either your formative assessment um, as an online test or a formative assessment as an assignment. So I've indicated just there what it looks like uh, where you find your online test. So yeah, you will just click on the online test link um, and it will divert you to the test. Yeah, I've indicated what it looks like if you have a formative assignment um, for that week. So there you will find your assignment instructions. You will also find your assignment itself that you can download. And then you will see there's a specific um, template that you need to use while you complete um, your assignment. And there is then also space to upload your assignment. Under this tab, or yes, at the bottom of this, we will also provide you with the marking guidelines um, as, uh, where, as soon as the results are released. So you'll be able to revert back to that to see where you went wrong or where you went right. Okay, then on the next tab, we have the Proctorio Help tab. 
Um, there we provide you um, with all information on, on the normal, normally frequent, frequently asked questions. So what is Proctorio? How, uh, how does it work? And um, any troubleshooting issues that you might have, um, we've, we've given explanations and how to sort that out on this specific tab. So for those of you that are not aware of what Proctorio is, Proctorio is your I want to say electronic invigilator. So that is the system that we use um, to record your exam um, while you're writing it online. Okay, then you have your exam prep um, tab where you will um, get information such as um, practice questions or recordings of presentations. So any additional study material um, that you might need to prepare for the exam. We also, in some of the modules, we provide um, previous exam papers. So that all of that can be found on the under the exam prep tab. Okay, then on the mock exam, for those of you not familiar with the mock exam, we set up the mock exam to be similar to that of the exam. Um, and the mock exam must be attempted to ensure that you are ready for the exam and that your system is working um, full, in full function for the Proctorio exam. Um, it's also a very useful tool to test your own knowledge as it is an actual um, exam, I want to say in, in the, uh, we normally use questions from previous exams, so um, it, it is similar to what you can expect in an exam environment. Then on the summative assessment um, exam tab is the place where you will be writing your exam. There you can find exam instructions, uh, giving you clear guidelines as to what you will require in the exam, what is allowed, what is not allowed in the exam, and also indicating again the exam rules. You will also pro be provided with a guide to technical support so that you know how to access technical support during your exam. Okay, so lastly there, um, you can then see that your summative assessment link will be available there that you can click on to download your exam and start with your exam. Then that is all from my side. Um, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce to you our program manager, Wadia Dramat. I'm not sure what is happening at the moment. Um, Similar. Hi, I'm trying to pull her up and she is here. Um, just um, there's something happening with her mic. Okay, no problem. So mm -hmm. while we are waiting for Wadia, um, I can just say that Wadia would, should be and would be your best friend during your qualification um, as she will be responsible for you and um, will be making contact with you on a regular basis. Thank you, Romalda. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the session. Um, as Romalda said, I'm, the, I'm your program manager. I'm the person that will be with you from the beginning of this journey. Um, while you're completing this qualification until the end. Um, I'm always in the background, so my role would be I'm the person that receives all your admission, um, your admission applications, I will work through them, and I'm also the lady that would send out your, um, your uh, completed um, admission approval letter once you're then admitted to this qualification. The... Um, and the letter will be detailed, telling you which modules you'll need to do and how long it will take you. And that is also dependent on how you are admitted onto this qualification. I'm also then the lady that sits at the back, um, taking you to the, through your journey when you do your assessments. I'll be there if you have any queries and concerns, whether you're able to complete the assessment on time or not, um, you'll be able to liaise with me. I also deal with all RPL students um, coming on board, those students 
that has an interim level five and six, which I will talk about later. Uh, I also do the um, exemptions. So any exemptions, um, if you've done a um, PGDEP at a previous institution and you're moving over to us, um, we also look at that in conjunction with my with Bromolda, which is uh, the head of department of, um, uh, of the school, part of that. So any queries that you have with it is, can I do a module this term? Can I skip a module? Um, any academic queries that, um, that you'd like to um, send to me, which I then forward to the academics, so I'll deal with all of those things. Also any AC requests that is coming in if you were sick um, and you're not able to, to do an exam or if for any, you know, life happens. We understand that life happens. So I'm here to liaise between all our various departments as well as academics. That is basically what I'm here for. Next slide, please. Okay. So a little bit about me. I've been with Mopoc for 16 years. Um, I've been from sales to program manager. Um, I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, hence, I've been here for 16 years. Um, my goal is to see my students complete and you know reach the end goal, which is to obtain the, the certificates. Um, what I love about us, um, the journey, we've come a long way. We've tried to redefine and redesign this qualifi qualification to such an extent that everyone that starts uh, can make a success of it. So for me, it is, you know, our students, besides the fact that our lecturers and academics are dedicated and determined to, to take you through this journey, um, it also depends on the student to, to take on that and, you know, dedication, discipline and determination is what is required to complete it. And yeah, hand in hand, we can com you guys can complete this qualification. Next slide, please. Okay, let's just to talk about the minimum requirements for this qualification. So this is a postgrad, a postgrad which is similar like an honours qualification, which is on a level eight. In order for that, you then require a, 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 a relevant degree, an appropriate degree to complete this qualification, which is on a level six, or then which was the old level six, and now um, redefined as a new level sevens. Uh, um, a passing metric with a higher grade in a C symbol is required. So obviously, because you need to demonstrate you that you have maths and that you can do calculations, because that is what this qualification is about. Um, we provide every student with a specific um, outline uh, study plan, which they will need to follow to complete this qualification in. Um, and then if you as a student do not have tax as a qualification, which is a requirement to do this, you will then, we would look at you and say, okay, you do not have tax, but then we'll put you over a two year plan for you to complete. So modules that you'll complete firstly would be induction and your financial planning environment. And upon completion of those two modules and passing it, will you be allowed um, to have access to the rest of the qualification? Okay, next slide please. Then our RPL students, those are our students that does not have our BCom, um, but they have an income level five and six in financial planning. They are considered as recognition of prior learning students and we give, uh, we allow 10% of, of, of students with those qualifications to enter onto our qualifications. So only 10% of students via the RPL is allowed on. So currently we can only take well, intake is for RPLs is between December and January. Then we'll see if we have, um, if we can take on a little bit more via June. But then that is the only two time periods where we take on um, RPL students. If you have any other qualification besides the um, income level six and income level um, five and six in financial planning, you're welcome to send it to me. We can have a look. Um, but the basic is that you need to have because remember, this is a very specific qualification, and therefore we require the five and six in financial planning as an entry onto the RPL. Next slide, please. Okay. 
As I explained on admission, I will provide you with a detailed study plan um, from beginning to end when you need to complete the qualification. Obviously, that is the shortest period that I provide you with. As I said, uh, we understand that life happens. Should you want to skip it to, uh, a, a session, a cycle, as we call it, you're welcome to confirm with me and we can then see to provide you with a different plan um, and how to complete the qualification in. So everybody starts with the induction, um, the induction to financial planning, um, whether you're a BCom student and whether you're an RTL student. Everybody is allowed to complete that module firstly. Um, as I explained, students um, who do not have taxation at NCF level six will be required to complete the induction and financial planning environment as their first port of modules. Then we have retirement planning. Um, which there is a prerequisite, uh, which is a prerequisite for investment planning. So you need retirement planning in order to do investment planning. And then investment planning, we would like students to do investment planning before case study. That is just the rules of progression that we have. Okay, and then the case study module is then your last one, which is your exit exam, as Pramilda has explained. Um, and once you have completed, and if you obtained your results, you then may apply to the FBI to do your board exam. So there is, we currently have six cycles and you're only allowed to do one module per, e per cycle. Okay, next please. So if you're interested in this qualification, and unfortunately you don't have funding right now, you can go to Capitec or you can contact Capitec. Um, or there is also on our website, there's also the Capitec details where you can click on um, and you can request for funding from them. They will then provide you with all the details to complete. And once you have been approved, they will pay the money over to Milpoch, which will allow you then co to, con to start with your qualification as such. So there is no reason not to, even with no money, there's always you know, a way that you can study through the institution. So we'd like to welcome everyone who is interested. Um, you know, click today, start today. There's never uh, a time that you cannot start. This qualification has no close of admission as we have six cycles for the year. So you are welcome to start um, you will obviously, when you apply, you will fall into one of those cycles and start commencing with your qualification. All right. Next slide, please. So if there's any questions, you're welcome to post them and me and Romilda will gladly assist in answering them. Um, hi ladies, I see there is a question, one question on the ask a question box and it's from Mzuki, so sorry, let me mute so there's no, I, I'm hearing an echo. Uh, there's a question from Mzuki, so and Mzuki is asking, is it too late to apply and register to for postgrad in financial planning now in June 2022? What is the process? Is there any MIP? or application or registration fees. So I'm not sure who's going to take this. Okay. I'll go. Um, okay, so registrations or, or admissions. So there's always admissions before registration. So admissions are currently open. Our next cycle will commence on the 5th of July. So if you can get your admission in by before then, you'll then be able to, if you meet all the admission requirements, you'll be able to start on the 5th of July. Um, the admissions can be completed online, so you'll go into the Millpark website, complete the online admission, provide us with all the requirement documentation that is necessary for us to approve. Once approved, you'll get an, uh, an official admission approval letter. The admission fee is 1,400 Rand, which is a non-refundable admission fee. Um, thank you, Wadia. And then in terms of the registration, sorry, registration process, is there a particular process or is there a number or an email address that uh, Zukiso can, um, can use to contact us? 
Maybe we can just give those details. Okay, so on once you're approved on your admission approval letter, there is the uh, 086 number, which is for student services. Um, there's as well, there's an email address that you can um, just email your, your info through if you're unable to then complete the online registration. But the process is as such, you complete online admission and then you'll be able to process, you will be able to complete an online registration because we provide you with your own personal login details where you will log on and complete the online registration. But should you struggle, you're most welcome to either call us or email us or you can even email me as well and say once the process has been completed. Thank you very much, Wadia. Um, I don't see any more questions on either uh, the, the chat box or the ask a question box. So um, I think maybe we've given all the information that there is to give. And um, maybe Wadia, you can pop in the next cycle date on the chat box so that people can see and even those that have why yet to watch the recording can see when the dates are, uh, if we can populate those there so that it's easier for people to see when when the next, um, when is the next um, cycle happening. And while you do that, I'm going to hand over to our head of school to maybe do the closing remarks for us. Thank you, Samila, and thank you, Wadia. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. It was a pleasure talking to you, and um, like Wadia said, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to just maybe give us a call, go onto our website, go and ask us to call you back, um, and we will uh, get in touch with you. Um, yeah, good luck to everyone um, facing the cold and the rain as it is raining on our side today and good luck with the load shedding as well. We wish you all the best and we look forward again, we look forward to joining you in your learning journey with Mopark Education. Thank you very much, Bernalda. Well, well said. Um, so uh, if you guys have any more questions after the sessions, you are um, welcome to contact us uh, via the 086 number or send an email to our student services and they will be in contact. So uh, good luck and we definitely are looking forward to partnering with you on your learning journey. Um, have a great day. Goodbye everyone. <laughs>